JJK season two was insane. I mean, it was probably one of the best single anime seasons I have seen since season two, the second half of Demon Slayer. Just the momentum that this season had of JJK incredible now i know there's a lot of things going on with the with the animators you know how much i sacrificed actual mappa with with everything i know season two of jjk has been riddled with fucking controversy but man 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 when i say all that controversy was worth it it was worth it Fair moments. First one, Gojo and Ghetto. This is the ultimate tag team combo right here. Like Ghetto alone is already scary. Gojo is scary. Together, unheard of power. But then when the first thing your mind thinks is they're pretty much unbeatable. So who could who could give them a run? Who could who could try to fade them? Who could run their pockets? And boy, the season did not miss a fucking beat with this one. It introduces Mr. Take Your Bitch himself, Toji. Toji is this like mercenary nigga. He is a thoroughbred, savage, off the chain beast, monster, unparalleled in what his craft is. Just scary, just a scary individual, all right? He is a sorcerer hunter. Like, honestly, he's like a sorcerer mercenary. He doesn't have any curse ability. So we're not expecting anything really from him. Like, probably will he be able to throw some hands? Sure. What he does over the course of like, Eight episodes. I don't even think it's eight episodes. I think it's like six episodes. It's just oh, oh fuck yeah. This nigga puts Gojo in the ground. Like low key, he he actually whoop Gojo's ass. Everybody watching the season two know that yo Gojo looking like he about to be in a body bag. He about to be rest in peace. Get the tombstone ready. He out of there. Straight out of there. Crazy. This one nigga Toji runs the fade with Gojo. Beats him. Then pulls up, knocks off the target in the smoothest of fashion. This KO was so smooth, Deadshot himself would have stopped and went. Now that's how you supposed to shoot. It was amazing. But then the target was right next to Ghetto when this happens. After watching the target get knocked off and finding out that his homeboy was laid out upstairs, Ghetto loses it and throws everything he has at this guy everything he emptied the whole bag on him it was like santa doing it oprah status with his motherfucking curses you get a curse you get a curse you get a curse but it was all just going to one person and he was smooth dodging all of them he beat every single thing that was thrown at him it wasn't even a close fight it wasn't even a close fight this nigga toji destroyed them it was horrible it was like witnessing a fort a first 48 murder you don't even know what to say as this whole starts and ends you just you just caught off guard hell you you see the killer you just you you know he's about to get away with the crime there are no words for the emotional flux that happens watching toji body these two i had to just stop the episode walk off go take a walk gojo was not dead gojo wakes back up gojo goes instantly to find him and kills that nigga right there. Gojo was so pissed off. Yo, I know it's plot armor like a motherfucker, but he was so pissed he got faded. He tried a technique he hadn't even mastered. The level of fuckery that happens as this man Toji gets killed is unheard of. And it is only the start of the madness that is season two. My next favorite scene in season two is one that no one has made any fucking videos about, and I'm waiting on it, okay? And that is Mechamaru versus Mahito. Now, this fight came out of nowhere. What was that? What the hell was that? Mechamaru is very similar to the dude who's on Invincible. I don't remember his name. I be calling him Metal Heck. They are humans who are technologically and mentally very advanced on a Tony Stark level, but their bodies is trash. Frail, broken, injured, or in a constant state of pain and they can't use their physical bodies. So what do they do? They use all their technical resources and know-hows to build Iron Man lookalikes to go out there and fight on their behalf. I thought Mechamaru was on some uh, Alphonse type shit. 
there you are. Very well done, Alphonse Elric. I thought Necromaro was just a spirit cursed into a suit of armor. Uh, that was not the case. That was not the case at all. Mechamaru makes a deal with Mahito, who's on the ops, the villain side of the show. If you fix my fucked up body with your curse ability, I will slide you information about the squad for you can attack. That's a fucked up plan. Often when people do these plans, it's stupid. You think you're going to finesse the villain, but you usually end up getting finessed by the villain. So at first we're thinking Mechamaru only had the Iron Man bodies, right? Mahito easily whops them the fuck out of here because he's basically like five different things all at the same time. Mahito low-key is the scariest fucking cursed evil guy to me because Mahito is like Envy with a T-1000 with like a fucking Elastaman blend in there. But at the same time, Joker. It's like if you took all four of those characters, meshed them together, you got Mahito now. This nigga Mechamaru chose to uh, squab it out with Mahito in a big ass Neon Evangelion Gundam. And I thought that this was gonna go his way until I realized some things about Mechamaru. One, he's an idiot. He's an absolute idiot. He, he didn't think this fight through at all. Two, he really underestimated what Mahito could do. Mahito has shown time and time again that he's very similar to Saiyans. When you push that nigga into a corner, he's gonna have a power break. A little bit of plot armor, but it also is pushing through your limits, and Mahito does that every single time. I wasn't shocked when Mahito turned it up to the next level on him. I, I honestly was shocked that Mahito waited so long to turn it up to the next level on him. I expected as soon as Geto dropped the barrier, he was gonna run that fade with him so bad that uh, uh, Mechamaru was gonna just adjust and run he did not do that Mechamaru stood up stood tall got folded but he stood tall and I respected him for it last but not least my third my most favorite scene of the season Mahito Itadori round three all right because there's three yeah. rounds to this fight and the first two rounds were so absurd that I was like ah yeah this is getting bad round one was definitely going to Mahito he he beat the breaks off of Itadori. It was getting so disgusting. I was like, damn, if Itadori keeps this up, it's, it, I don't know what to tell him. He really don't know how to answer some of these combos he's getting hit with. And then that nigga Mahito took his ability and it got bad. And that's round one. Round two is when his best friend, AKA his brother pulls up. It's not his real brother, but it is his brother. These niggas then proceed to fade this man with a 2v1 fight, clap technique. Oh, it was just, oh, it was piecing them up. And this is why I'd be afraid of Mahito. They push Mahito into a corner again, just like what happened with Mechamaru, and he hit the Super Saiyan on them to a whole new form out here looking like Ultimate Frieza. The last form of Mahito is so crazy in comparison to the form prior that it's like, I don't know if y'all ever seen Gantz. But when the villain pull up like this, oh, it ain't about to be no fair fight, bro. Go ahead and prepare for some bullshit. It's about to be cheats all across the board for something like this. It's about to be cheater central. And it exactly was that. Mahito started just pulling out powers out of nowhere. I couldn't even believe it. He was just doing stuff that I was just sitting here watching like, wow, I can't even believe this. To the point where Itadori has half his mouth blown open out here looking like Two-Face just... At that point, I was like, bro, you starting to look like Sukuno with no transformation. This is getting bad. Y'all, is, is help on the way? Is someone going to come assist? Like, I know y'all got other grade two sorcerers. Somebody's got to pull up and help. Nobody pulls up. Nope, nobody, nobody pulls up. Boy, when I say Itadori stood up, he, I can't even, boy, he started levitating on people. He was looking like Superman when he gets into the upper orbits. He was levitating. He was going so hard on Mahito in his new form. Mahito turned into a rabbit and literally, ran. he literally played rabbit. He ran and tried to hide, tried to get anywhere away from this man and could not find peace. He went looking everywhere for it and there was no peace to be found bro he couldn't even find the words because he knew the fight had completely gone the third round to itadori itadori was standing over this man and repeating back to him the same words that he had said i think in round one about how they are the same this is with no sukuna he'd been pushed to that limit that he was unlocking whole new abilities and just just kept going and kept pushing it i just I, I couldn't believe it, man. Season two of JJK is off the chain. If you have not seen season two of JJK, run out to go watch season two of JJK right now. If you need the link, message me on Instagram. I will give you my personal link on how I watch everything. And this was the wildest 
anime season, second season I've I've yet to watch. I'm I, I'm mad that that I'm finding out there might not be a third season. We're going to have to figure it out. I need season three of JJK. If you want to chat with me about JJK season two, jump in the comments or, or hit me up on Instagram. Uh, I'm going to be posting, you know, clips from this video on Instagram. Just tag, just tag me in the chat. Talk to me in the clips, bro. You know, I am not a stranger to talking at anime. Can I get your autograph? I've been following you for a long time. Bartez! Oh, goddamn, I cannot believe season two of JJK. That it, it, I, I sit around still thinking about it. Like, man, what did them niggas do to make Sukuna that mad?